Rollies, you dumbass, <laughs> getting knocked out. Focus on your opponents instead of focusing on me. God damn it. All other fighters, learn from Rollies. Don't talk shit about promoters. There's only three of us in the world. Boxing professionals are at it again. This time, they have come for Rolando Raleigh Romero, as he has shockingly announced his retirement from boxing after his humiliating loss against Isaac Pitbull Cruz. You feel me? I feel like this style was good. My style, you feel me? With, with, and even Lara, you know what I'm saying? So. Once the match was over, and after initially speaking, hinting at a comeback while he spoke in the ring, Raleigh Romero disclosed this abrupt decision in an interview. And many boxing professionals have welcomed the news with so much dismay and displeasure. While some had words of encouragement for Raleigh Romero, hoping he changes his mind and comes out of retirement, others damaged him more with their words, saying he was never a boxer in the first place if this would make him quit. But that's just a tip of the enormous iceberg of words for Romero. There's so much more to come. Let's get right in. Yeah, let's sign that contract. Roley, on the other hand, he needs to probably take a few steps back and fight some mid-level fight. The World Boxing Association super lightweight title fight between Raleigh Romero and Isaac Cruz was highly anticipated, not only because of the championship that was on the line, but because many wanted to assess the performances of both fighters in relation to their bouts against Gervonta Davis. To them, the winner of the bout was the one with the better performance against Gervonta Tank Davis, despite the fact that they both lost against him. The fight kicked off on Saturday, the 30th of March, 2024, after several months of waiting. Bruce continues to walk down Romero again, launches the right hand, left hook, Romero takes the shot, still standing, referee intervenes, Mamma Mia, he sucks! And eventually, it was the one whose match against Gervonta Tank Davis was so intense that it had to be decided by the scorecards. It was Isaac Pitbull Cruz who emerged victorious by humiliating Raleigh Romero in the eighth round with a dramatic technical knockout victory. And after the match, Rolando Romero has shocked the world by his decision to retire after just 17 professional bouts. Romero was unbeaten in his first 14 bouts with 13 knockout victories. He had not tasted anything close to a loss until his 15th bout, where he fought against Hervonta Tank Davis and had a similar knockout in the 7th round. He however followed that loss with a win against Ismael Barroso. Nevertheless, the outcome of the match remains a controversial topic till date, after the referee was seen to have prematurely called off the fighting despite Barroso looking fit and responding fine. Though Raleigh Romero won the bout, many didn't see it as a convincing victory and had been waiting on Romero to fight Isaac Cruz to determine his worthiness of his world champion title. Sadly, Raleigh Romero failed the test, and now he's looking unwilling to take on any other test in the boxing ring, as he's announced his retirement from the sport. This decision came after his interview in the ring, where he seemed to speak incoherently and in a state of utmost disorientation. In the in-ring interview, he seemed like one concussed, However, he was able to join a few words together and gave a message that seems so timely and significant to this season globally. It's the season of Easter and Raleigh Romero promised to bounce back from his defeat like Jesus Christ rose on the third day. However, after he recovered fully and moved out of the arena, he had an interview where he revealed his shocking decision. In the interview, when asked about how he felt about the defeat, he said, I don't feel good. It's really sad. There's nothing to say. I just feel sad. He was then asked about his next move, and his response was what shocked many, even the interviewer. I'm not sure I want to do this anymore. I don't see myself doing this anymore. This is sad and overwhelming. I don't see myself coming out of this into the ring, he said. Once the interview got out and got the attention of professional boxers, even the ones who were silent about the match had words to say to him. The very first to react was Oscar De La Hoya, who hasn't been on the best terms with Raleigh Romero. In response to Romero's sudden retirement, De La Hoya said, I'm not surprised. You can't fight once in a year and a half and have any more passion for fighting. What keeps fighters going is the passion, and he's lacking that. I'm not shocked it's getting bad for him. He's chosen not to learn, not just about manners, but he's not even learned his boxing well either. This statement from Oscar De La Hoya, the golden boy of boxing, came after his immediate reaction on hearing about Raleigh Romero's loss, received heavy criticism from supporters and professionals. 
The Golden Boy boss released his hysterics moments after Cruz stopped Romero with a devastating blow as Romero dropped his WBA 140-pound title. And despite criticisms for kicking the fighter, Raleigh Romero, while he was down, De La Hoya has been undeterred by them and has even done more. The former Pound for Pound King released another video later for a second dose where he was seen saying, Raleigh's you dumbass getting knocked out. Focus on your opponent instead of focusing on me, said De La Hoya in further goading. All other fighters learn from Raleigh's. Don't talk shit about promoters. There are only three of us in the world. It must be remembered that Oscar De La Hoya and Raleigh Romero didn't just start their issues. It had begun some time ago when Raleigh Romero was insulting Oscar De La Hoya with his famous F Golden Boy comments. Talking about the issue back then, De La Hoya seemed to have issues with not just Romero, but his team of promoters as well. I've worked with Bob Arum. I've worked with Eddie Hearn. I've worked with Samson. I've worked with all these. But for some reason, working with Al Heyman is impossible. And now he has his fighters talking shit about me and this and that, Raleigh saying, oh, fuck Golden Boy. And like, relax, dude, the fight's not against me, Oscar De La Hoya said. I'm trying to get you the most money possible, and now you're fighting for pennies on the dollar on a platform that you don't even know of. You never fought on that, so how do you know it's better than ours? De La Hoya, however, claimed he had nothing against Romero other than the disrespect he's been showing. Look, I actually love the kid. Raleigh, he's a character. He's funny. He's genuinely funny. And I think deep down inside, he's a nice kid. But you don't disrespect, you know? Like, there's no need for it, you know, it's all good. You're not fighting me. I mean, if I would have fought you, I would have knocked your ass out easily. But you're not fighting me, so just keep it cool. He also had a word for Romero's promoter after he rubbished his own proposal. Trust me, it would have been the most money he would have ever made in any fight. But like I said before, Al Heyman is notorious and great at undoing fights. He's great at that. Why do you think Keith Thurman is fighting for what? The first time in two years. Raleigh is fighting again once in a year and a half. All the fighters with PBC, they fight like once every two years. What is that? That's not a way to build your legacy. That's not a way to give fight fans the best fight. That's not the way to do things. And then you come out talking shit? Just don't do that. I'm fed up with it. I'm tired of it. It's not getting to me. Don't worry about it. Because I'm doing my own thing. But just think. Just think. Fortunately for Oscar De La Hoya, he had his prediction come to pass after he had predicted a knockout for Isaac Cruz. He said, it's definitely going to be Pitbull. Absolutely. He's going to probably knock him out. Absolutely. They're both going to weigh in at 140. And I'm not sure how high Raleigh goes, but Pitbull is one hell of a pressure fighter. We'll see if Pitbull merits an opportunity. Rollies, you dumbass. Getting knocked out. Focus on your opponents instead of focusing on me. God damn it. All other fighters learn from Rollies. Don't talk shit about promoters. There's only three of us in the world. While Oscar wasn't surprised that Raleigh Romero had lost his passion, Mike Tyson had advice for him. Mike Tyson is known to have had several ups and downs during his career before eventually retiring in 2005. As a result, such an experience wouldn't be strange to the baddest man on the planet who at some point had a three-year stint in prison. Tyson said, I've just got advice for him. He doesn't want to retire, he only needs a break. Once he gives himself two weeks, no social media, no fans, no promoters, no boxing, no opponent, just him retreating and spending time with himself and his loved ones. Trust me, after a while, he'd say he wants to fight again. Tyson then continued and shared his experience. I've had moments like this several times in my career. I almost gave up already and that wasn't it. I just needed a break, but I didn't get the right breaks. I didn't have the right lessons and models. So. I just advise him to go for a break and he will be back to his best very soon. It's surprising how Mike Tyson, who has a big match coming up in a few months, has the time to share his reservoir of knowledge. He finally concluded, he's just starting so he shouldn't be worn out. He's not had up to 20 bouts. When I was his age, I had fought over 30 bouts. So he's got a long way to go. He's got potential and he can become whatever he wants. He should not give up now. In similar fashion to Mike Tyson, Jeff Mayweather also had words of encouragement on hearing about Raleigh Romero's retirement plans. Jeff advised him against retirement and like Tyson, advised him to retreat and view the match from a newer perspective and work on himself. When asked about his thoughts on the subject, Jeff said, 
I think the most important thing is for him to go back to the gym, refocus on this fight, and see what he didn't do and what he didn't even try to do and try to just work on the next fight and be 100% ready. I don't know what he's going to do, but I think that the most important thing is to, for him is to go back to the gym, refocus on, on this fight and see. The current CEO of Mayweather Promotions, Leonard Ellerby, upon hearing the news of Raleigh Romero's retirement, labeled it a joke. He said, that's such a joke. I understand he's not fine at the moment, but don't take that seriously. Raleigh has got such a long career and so much more to do. He's not started yet. Trust me when I say he means none of it. He won't do that. We've got so much to do together, and that's definitely not part of our plans. Though some fans had claimed Ellerby's comments were fueled by the financial gains the promotions got from Romero, there would be other reasons than just financial gains, and it would be utterly impossible to allow one of their most popular fighters go in such an unimpressive manner. This was Leonard Ellerby's third comment after the match. Immediately after the match, Ellerby was interviewed and he even claimed Romero needed no rest and will be active immediately. Little wonder why he labeled Romero's retirement decision a joke. He said versus, it was a good fight. Rolando suffered a setback. Congratulations to Isaac and his team. They had a very good fight. No, Raleigh doesn't need a rest. That's boxing. Shit happens. Romero was in phenomenal shape and had several successful moments in the fight. Proud of Romero? He gave it his all. Shit happens, it's part of the sport, but I don't even think about it. I'm concerned about the health and well-being of my fighters. Romero is fine, Leonard Ellerby said. But that wasn't all. After coming across Oscar De La Hoya's response and message to Rolando Romero following his knockout loss to Pitbull, Leonard Ellerby criticized Oscar. Wow, Raleigh's okay, but what if he wasn't and something tragic happened? Classless behavior from two Hall of Fame fighters and promoters, especially immediately after a fight, in my opinion. Props again to Isaac Cruz and his team on a terrific performance, said Ellerby. When you talk shit, you have to eat humble pie. I talked big shit about Cruz getting clipped, but I was wrong. My guy gave his all and lost, but more importantly, he's okay. It's part of the game. I talk shit about Hearn all the time, but to his credit, he would never do any shit like that. We all talk shit to build fights up, but again, they don't know if he was okay afterward. They don't know if everything checked out okay afterward or if the young man went to the hospital. I was surprised at Nard Hopkins, not at Oscar at all. Karma is a bitch. Fight, very, very good fight for the fans. Um, Roley came up short tonight. Congratulations to Pitbull and his team. They fought a very good fight. Ryan Garcia also didn't miss a chance to slam media rival Raleigh Romero immediately after hearing about Raleigh Romero's decision to quit boxing. Remember that Garcia and Romero were reportedly close to a deal for a fight this spring before Romero opted to fight Cruz, leaving Garcia to go back to the table with Devin Haney, whom Garcia is scheduled to face on April 20th. However, on hearing Romero's decision, Garcia said, I already saw it coming. I already told him to leave the sport. I'm glad he's seen that he's too little to compete in this sport. Bye, Raleigh. Would follow his matches in influencer boxing. He has a fan already. Thanks for accepting that he wasn't ever fit. Sorry to those he defeated. They could leave too. He was never a boxer in the first instance, Garcia said on Twitter space. This came after his viral tweets on Raleigh Romero immediately after the match, where he said, Remember when Raleigh thought he pulled a fast one on me by choosing to fight Pitbull at the last second and then proceeded to get knocked out, Garcia said on X. Main event to the co-feature to the KO, knockout. Yeah. Right here, he was on and stopped yeah. it at the right time. Great job by Taylor. I, I really love that. Isak Pitbull Cruz representing the Mexican people, always fighting to Garcia also suggested that Romero should do influencer crossover boxing and said he thinks Dean the Great would beat him. In all seriousness, Raleigh needs to do influencer boxing, and I'm not kidding. I think Dean beats him. Dean the Great, for those unfamiliar, is one of the better crossover boxers and has repeatedly called out top pros, including Garcia himself and Gervonta, Tank Davis. And finally, Garcia now believes he saw it all coming and has prepared an optional sport for Romero to dive into instead of staying jobless. The next to talk about his retirement was the owner of Isaac Cruz's promotional team, Manny Pacquiao. 
Pacquiao, despite his excitement with his Signe's win, had some good words for Raleigh Romero and wasn't in support of his departure. That should never happen. A defeat teaches some lessons that can never be taught by a win. He should take the lessons and move on. That should be left behind him. He's just a few games into it. He had about 20 to 30 more fights. He should improve and stay motivated. The match between Romero and Cruz brought so many memories of Floyd Mayweather versus Manny Pacquiao. And that's because Raleigh Romero is signed to the Mayweather promotional team while Isaac Cruz is signed to Manny Pacquiao's promotional team. However, while the fight between Floyd Mayweather Jr. and Manny Pacquiao had to be decided by the scorecards, this one ended in an 8th round knockout. The crowd was raucous and they were screaming out support for Cruz. As expected, Cruz came out on the attack, throwing big sweeping punches, but Romero was quick, twitchy, and too fast to be caught so easily. And do your best and hard work, focus on the fight, and you can do it. All the support, right. baby. Woo! Cruz was tight, closed guard, marching forward, really proving to have earned his nickname. He was dogged and he landed a huge left hand, and Romero staggered. Cruz pounced, and Romero was covering up but was clearly in trouble here. Romero was clearly not fully recovered, but was just about surviving until the bell. In the second, Cruz came out marching forward, battering away at Romero's body. Romero seemed to have recovered his wits about him to an extent, and was back to stick and move boxing. Cruz was simply walking forward, taking everything that Romero had to offer, throwing heavy hands back at the champ, and moving regardless. Cruz threw a haymaker of a right hand, but came up empty. That was a heavy hand. If it had landed, Romero would have been in trouble. For the moment, Romero was moving nicely, getting out of trouble and staying away from Cruz. In the fourth, Romero was landing nice right hands, but they were not having any lasting effect on the pit bull. He needed to get some combinations into play. He couldn't just rely on single shots to do the work. Cruz's shots were so hurtful that Romero had to rely on leveling the field with a quantity of shots. Cruz landed a right hand and then a left hook and he was brutalizing Romero there. Romero was quick, but he was trying to trade with a puncher. Romero showed a good start in the fifth, landing one-two combos and even adding a right uppercut to the mix. Cruz landed a nice right hand and it seemed to have Romero all undone. He stumbled back and held on to Cruz, drawing a rebuke from the referee. The referee called time after another clinch and deducted a point from Romero. That was huge. In the sixth, Romero was desperate to keep Cruz on the outside, jabbing and moving, but Cruz was relentless, marching forward and when he got into range, working hard shots with both hands to the midriff. Cruz came out in the seventh with a double jab, something that he almost never does. Romero was waiting for him to slow down, but Cruz was powering forward regardless of anything coming back at him. Romero was sticking and moving using that shoulder roll, while Cruz had no defense to speak of, simply munching up every punch coming at him and throwing heavy hands. A huge left landed flush and Romero was staggered. He was in trouble, trying desperately to keep his feet. Romero then threw a right cross to slow Cruz down, but it was very little. The referee started the final round by getting the doctor to take a look at Romero. Romero looked confused, and the referee explained that he was very close to stopping the fight in the last round. The doctor decides that Romero was okay to continue, and the round got underway. Cruz came out blasting, and the ref called time to get his glove laces retaped. Cruz came out on the restart and landed with both hands. Romero was rocked. Cruz pounced and landed left, right, left. The ref had seen enough and stepped in to save Romero. That was it. Mexico has a new world champion. Isaac Cruz is the new WBA world super lightweight champion. He knew he had him out. He, he was. He he wasn't there, Romero, so he just jumped on him, had uh, overhand right, overhand left, and just power shots, vicious shots from, from Cruz. If you enjoyed watching this video, kindly react by clicking the like button below. For the very best updates on news, moments, events, and actions in the world of boxing, stay connected with us by subscribing to our YouTube channel, and don't forget to turn on notifications to get alerted when we drop quality contents like this. Until next time, peace out.